it was only the a margin miss otherwise the numbers were uh, uh, you know not not much to complain about it also a lot i guess so maybe uh, some profit yeah maybe yeah. maybe profit yeah it's always a sell on news uh, likelihood but uh, that's a solid 4% of uh, tata chemicals and uh, 5% off on sbi card so clearly uh, the revolving credit uh, falling is not impressing the market as abhishek was pointing out uh, Industars also is not getting any leg up. Uh, again, the numbers did show some kind of problems and uh, not getting the money in time from one of its uh, vendors. Mm. Uh, I would assume it's Vodafone. That is also uh, impacting the uh, performance of Industars. But basically today, metals are not doing all that well. I mean, NMDC, Sale, mm. Nalco, uh, Vedanta, all of them, uh, Tara Steel. Uh, anything metal mm. uh, is not doing After well. After the big there run yesterday. Yes. After so the so run. there is a bit of profit taking there. Okay. Well, for the market, the mid-cap index is now a tad bit in the red, down about 50-odd points. Prashant Kemka, the founder at White Oak Capital Management, is joining in now to give us his view on the markets. Prashant, good morning and happy Diwali to you and your entire team mm. at White Oak. This has been a bumper Diwali, uh, is it not? I mean, no one really expected that the market will zoom like this despite all the challenges that we've seen globally. But how are you feeling right now? Do you think new highs will be taken before we know it? Or are you still a bit circumspect? Thank you, Sonia, for having me on the show here and wishing you also a very happy Diwali and your colleagues also a very happy Diwali at CNBC. Thank you. Uh, so the uh, market is obviously a confluence of factors that are affecting the market. Uh, global factors have been very dominating uh, this year, particularly due to the uh, sustained higher le level of inflation, which has caused um, you know, A, on one side, bankers to, central bankers to high rates around the world, and B, also caused some slowdown in consumption and worries about uh, slowdown in corporate profits going forward. So as a combination, if you see, uh, the markets in India have been flattish because the issues have not impacted, this time around, issues have not impacted India as acutely. Uh, because inflation in India at about 7-8%, it's not outside the uh, range of what we're used to. Uh, we had CPI in double digits uh, during the early part of last decade for sustained for several years. And our average over the last 20 years itself has been about 5%. So 7-8% is not that far off from what is our norm. Whereas in the US and Europe, 7-8% uh, inflation compared to 1 or 2% inflation that they're used to or even lower is uh, quite dramatic. So that, for that reason, while obviously it's not a positive, uh, but it's not as acute a uh, problem so far in India for a variety of reasons that is uh, that is so because of the consumption basket and whatnot. And, and secondly, the problems that uh, you know Europe is facing because of the war also has not been uh, such a, a negative for India uh, and Indian corporate sector as well. There are several segments of the market or sectors or industries that are in fact benefiting on top of the China plus one trend that's been going on since very long. I think with what's happening in Europe now, um, India is uh, expected to play even more important role in supply chains going forward. Um, as an alternative source and being viewed as a safe haven, not only in, from an equity markets perspective or capital markets perspective, but also in the real world or the corporate world for sourcing and for having a manufacturing base. And that is all contributing to the positive um, outlook for the Indian industry. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, you put your finger on it, uh, Prashant. Uh, actually, I think the uh, Hong Kong index is at 2004 level, somebody is mm -hmm. pointing out. Uh, so, I, I mean, yes, it is very cheap, but who is to say it won't get cheaper from uh, what you're saying? Uh, Prashant, I will come back to the global backdrop in just a bit. I wanted to get your view on the results season so far. Are you getting a sense that results are likely to buck the global slowdown trend and continue to do well? Or should we be prepared for some earnings downgrade? So, a very interesting point, first of all, Lata, that you mentioned about Hong Kong being back to where it was some 20 years ago, and 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 uh, happy to uh, come back to that later. Yes. But to your more specifically, your question on the results. See, we are not obviously completely insulated from the rest of the world, uh, but what we are seeing in India compared to um, 
say more generally because every country in, globally also it's not that just india has done well there are other countries also like indonesia brazil and others who have done well mm. this year but in if i were to talk about india compared to let's say emerging markets in general or global uh, in general in india there are some positive factors also at play or the combination there are always negative factors and positive factors and yes there are negative factors right now at play but in india uh, on balance there are a few more positive factors at play so if china because of couple of reasons mm. more than a couple of reasons uh, a strict covid policy but even otherwise what's happening politically over there and all the attention it has gained around the world a combination of those factors on top of what was already going on which is a desire from uh, on part of global corporates to diversify their supply chains from china so china is negatively hit because of all the factors that are going on globally plus this additional factor whereas india while it is negatively hit by what's going on globally with respect to inflation and interest rates is a recipient a positively impacted by uh, this particular aspect of uh, um, you know shift away from china and europe as i said so because of these countervailing factors there there is a greater degree of positivity and that is going to show up in corporate earnings as well it's not that indian corporate earnings are not going to be affected at all um, and won't get uh, the growth would be impacted but it's not going to be impacted as much as let's say taiwan or korea or the rest of asia the 75% uh, of you know emerging markets where a slowdown in us and europe and and global markets may impact a large proportion of the economy uh, in, in a negative manner uh, without necessarily offsetting positives whereas in india there are enough offsetting or mitigating i would say mitigating factors as well that should uh, uh, that should result in indian earnings performance holding up better than rest of the okay. emerging market rest of the world Good morning, Mr. Kemka. Thanks so much for joining in. Uh, you know, Mr. Kemka, you have mentioned as well uh, in our past interactions that private sector banks—that's something that you like. You know, and that's uh, really been the street as we as well has been fairly optimistic on that front. But the outperforming index or the outperforming banking names have all been PSUs, and we get management after management who's joining in. They are talking about lower credit costs. They're talking about better loan growth, and they're saying that the loan book is in far better shape. You know, just to. Uh, for some cold water on those nightmares that we saw a few years ago when the book used to go bad do you believe that that valuation argument is good enough to allocate some money to psu banking names or would you stick to the big private banks itself certainly so generally you're right nigel we have always had uh, have our team has always found a lot of very attractive opportunities in banking particularly the private sector financials uh this year again you're right the government sector psu banks have done uh quite a lot better and maybe even over the last couple of years uh they've done quite well um it is in our view impossible to um keep switching between such large segments of the market say private segment private sector versus public sector and so on so the uh uh over longer time period if you see 10 20 year time periods private sector has continued to gain market share they have had much better performance in terms of credit quality as well as asset growth so growth as well as profitability has been far superior uh not to generalize because there have been uh, blow ups in private sector as well uh but there are opportunities in private sector banks which have delivered extremely well and do hold the promise of going forward also delivering very well the governance uh in private sector financials also in india is a is is very good uh, or there are at least lot of opportunities available for very good governance now it always in a cycle there would come times uh, or times when um these government sector banks would from a low point do very well and and some of them are good from a structural perspective as well i don't argue but it's just that the private sector financials offer a lot more compelling opportunities even if there are a few in the government sector banks that also uh, have done well over time okay well i uh, just want to point out there's a big crack that we're seeing in uh, some of these platform companies particularly on nika nika is down almost 6% right now on big volumes it's <clears> gone well below that 1000 rupee mark just pull up the stock 
Um, as we know, the lock-in period for many of these companies are all set to expire uh, soon. The, uh, that's on November 10th for the, the pre-IPO investors. CTO Apart from that, for Nika particularly as well, the CTO has resigned. So there's an additional uh, negative news flow over there. Uh, but do keep an eye out on all of these uh, platform companies. You know, many of them are sitting at fresh lows. I mean, PB FinTech as well is now at a fresh 52-week low. It's already down about 60% this year. Um, you uh, know, this lock in um, <coughs> going away is a well telescoped event. Yes. So a one day reaction looks a little uh, exaggerated. It could also be the contagion from the US. Uh, mm. Tech stocks are not the flavor of the morning. Uh, everybody exaggerated uh, the uh, long term from these tech stocks. And perhaps now there is a profit taking wave hitting them as well. But as you point out in Nika, there is a specific reason. There is a specific reason. Uh, maybe you want to get Prashant in on that. Uh, yes, in fact, I wanted to ask him, uh, you know, Prashant, how do you approach this entire space? Because uh, there were big bang listings and uh, there were a lot of, you know, large project optimistic projections. But these platform companies have only disappointed investors. Uh, what do you do here? Do you stay away entirely or do you uh, try and look for some opportunities? Uh, so more the latter, uh, Sonia, always, I mean, we don't usually, um, you know, stay away from entire baskets of stocks uh, or segments of uh, companies, but do look for individual uh, specific opportunities. Uh, as Lata pointed out, partly it's also the contagion from NASDAQ and it's not just this uh, week or yesterday but also this year, as you know, NASDAQ is down about a third, right, this year, about 30-odd percent, compared to Dow Jones that's down only 10 percent. So particularly tech stocks have gone out of favor, which is quite a 180-degree turn from last year. If you recollect, uh, Sonia, I don't know how many investors in general would have been calling CNBC lines asking about how they can invest in FANG stocks, um, right? And um, uh, today, FANG is completely out of favor. Yeah, last year, it was a darling. So the pendulum in companies, particularly in market segments like this, where the most of the cash flows are very uh, long dated, long duration. Yeah, uh, some of them even concept stocks. Uh, uh, you know, when these are long dated business models, the pendulum can swing. Uh, more, uh, I mean, farther away from the center on either side. Now, and we won't know how far, whether we, we are even, um, which side of the center we are, we won't even know. Only in hindsight, we would know. So last year, I think pendulum swung uh, with the benefit of hindsight uh, on, on one extreme. And it could be that we are at the other side of the center already, but very hard to say. There are some Obviously, technical factors as well right now at play with all the lock-ins that are expiring. So anyone who wants to buy would not be uh, keen to step in and buy today and would rather wait for the lock-ins to expire. Or, or a lot of people would wait to for the lock-ins to expire. So right now, they are in a bit of a difficult spot for a combination of factors, Sonia and Lata. Uh, Prashant, uh, let me end with an unfair question to you. Uh, but people want to, you know, get that kind of confidence from experts like you. What kind of one-year gains can we look at? Uh, we are just about 4% off all-time highs. So all-time highs round the corner. What's the one-year gain? Absolutely. No, very uh, reasonable question. We get that all the time from yes. clients. And uh, though it is difficult to answer, it is, uh, um, you know, there's an expected return. Uh, I, as does our team, uh, uh, believes that markets on balance are fairly valued at this time uh, and at all times we usually maintain that uh, outlook at a market-wide level. Mm -hmm. So it's only reasonable. If you look at over a very prolonged period of time in almost any country, um, leave aside some specific starting point to specific ending point, markets in US, Europe or elsewhere, including in India, have tended to return um, returns in line with nominal GDP growth okay. plus quality percentage points of dividend. So my general expectation over any forward-looking 12-month period is the norm, longer term, not necessarily just next year's nominal GDP okay. growth, but the longer term is about double, low double digits would be my expectation. Lata. Okay, that's a very fair and encouraging reply. Thank you very much, Prashant Kimka. Have a great yeah. Sambat 2017 and yourself and your team. Likewise, you as well and your team. Thank you, Lata. And thank you so much. Thank okay. you.